uh, yeah, actually I'm... it's uh, it's toji that's what is happening okay so so i was saying that you please continue uh, you please continue okay so I, what i was saying is and uh, is that you know covid as an opportunity to be to be exploited to meet our future challenges we might be wearing these masks on our nose and our on our mouths but then we have to take the, these masks off our eyes to see where actually uh, globally globe is heading doctor, uh, doctor, doctor sir please open your video also you are not visible to us only voice is coming okay fair now fair enough okay so i have please now switched, i have please now continue. switched to other, other device so so okay, i'm please. saying that i'm saying that we need to now gear up to to face these new challenges and one of these is that you know mask has a symbol for the whole pandemic how this mask has to be now taken off from our eyes if not our nose and our mouth to see actually uh, where uh, we are heading institutionally where we are heading academically that challenge has to be you know one of the highest recommendations by the way of this new national policy and education it says that we need to make our students as global citizens if you look at the the concrete parameter is the concrete guidelines and the the framework that it has set it clearly looks forward in that direction now this covid and the institutional learning and online learning mode is is another way of actually linking with this you know global global consciousness global citizenship global academic citizenship if you may like because we can't remain behind you know we already have lagged in different spheres and now is the time to utilize there is one scholar who actually says that uh, society has now gone undergone a change and there is this total pedagogization that has happened you know you learn now everywhere it is not just the classroom you 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 are inside your kitchen you are inside your bedroom you are inside your office sitting you open your phone and you can access harvard lectures you can access cambridge oxford lectures provided you have the motivation to do now motivation is important how do you create and sustain that motivation in in students while you are away from them not in physical proximity to those students so i think these were some of the ideas that i wanted to share with you and the bottom line is that we do have challenges and it is it is a herculean task to actually go ahead with online learning in the kind of circumstances that we have right now but then we cannot sit back and make it an excuse that nothing can be done as i was saying just now i don't know if you heard me and university when lockdown started university there were some murmurs about online learning i didn't, i know some teachers who had started right there in march they started on the moment they felt that this, this is going to happen and two weeks have passed they started online learning they got in touch with students initially the attendance was poor but then gradually the attendance picked up because that you know that 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 brings you another thing that is the some pressure is important in academics some compulsion is important in academics you cannot just rid yourself of this factor maybe corporeal punishment is not okay but then we have to build up some psychological positive pressure on students to meet these deadlines and we saw that happening in the university that initially the attendance was extremely poor hardly anyone bothered they were using hyperlinks while the audio video was on but as soon as examination system came examination news came up the attendance started growing they stopped all other kinds of work while they were engaged in these online lectures so that did happen and it is possible to to reap whatever benefit we can from this and in future hopefully once covid gives us a break we can uh, you know boost our in digital infrastructure and use those resources to fully uh, be prepared for future pandemics like that of covid so i thank you again unisa for giving me this opportunity and your entire team for bringing us all together assembling us here virtually by the way the word virtually and literally previously we used to say when something had to be stressed emphasized and to bring in some element of honesty inside we will say literally speaking now we have to get used to virtually speaking and virtually might change its meaning now in the new context literally might be virtually and virtually might be literally so anyway thank you again for for uh, allowing me to speak on this issue and thank you other people also afro saab from a far off place for sharing his views the international dimension of this problem and other people as well thank you and 
uh, hopefully see you sometime in the future in physically without a mask thank you very much so fascinating dr sab it was nice to have you uh, really the, the great words you talk about uh, i hope definitely it would uh, uh, be appreciated by all our participants uh, thank you so much in start of your busy schedule and uh, on a short notes uh, you make yourself available we are very thankful to you and now ladies and gentlemen i would request now our another speaker dr bilal uh, who has done his phd from iit kharagpur he is faculty in higher education department teaching uh, in department of english uh, women's college antanag now i request dr bilal to continue his uh, the proceedings of uh, the webinar please bilal over to you good afternoon everyone am i able to, uh, am i yeah audible? yeah you are audible absolutely audible you continue thank you thank you uh good afternoon everybody and uh, at the outset i would like to thank you particularly uh, the principal of your college professor ar najar sahab for having organized this and the organizing team also the advisory team uh, headed by professor yunus sahab and thank you for inviting us i would also like to thank uh, professor uh, you know for parvez tal sahab honorable uh, commissioner secretary to higher education and also in abs absence here i'd like to thank professor yasmina shrai and the speakers on the occasion particularly uh, dr afroz sahab from university of brunei darul salam and dr javed iqbal i would begin uh, with some with some uh, inputs that i got even from this meeting organizing this webinar i know it has not been easy for any one of us uh, working in the colleges particularly in the kashmir colleges uh, to organize these webinars we have faced problems and the problems are multifaceted say for example we got uh, it was difficult for us to get connected to dr afroz initially and then finally with some technical clinches we got through it but it hints at a very important aspect of our preparedness how as uh, javed sahab also uh, you know pointed out that how prepared actually we were for this shift i uh, will be specifically talking to you from a position which is grounded in kashmir colleges because i'm working here my examples will draw from uh, my experience as an assistant professor in the higher education department of the valley and my focus will be what higher education institutes particularly should learn from covid rather than how we deal with covid we should also know what we can learn from this covid experience because if we know what we learn from this covid ex experience we will be making the education better uh, for all uh, for all times to come in fact we will uh, we, we will be facing these challenges in in future also but we'll be hopefully ready for all those challenges if we learn you know for learning anything we first need to understand the challenges that covid has triggered in higher education system of our country and what are the approaches particularly that we have taken we have been taken and how we have been able to respond to those challenges and problems that we have faced and what are finally the takeaways the takeaway terms or we call the lessons that we should learn actually from covid experience so that we are as i said we are able to respond to the future challenges in a much better and prepared manner now if we if we if we look at coronavirus i mean it spread as afroz also pointed out there is one positive point in that coronavirus disease or covid-19 as we call it now it was first reported in uh, the chinese city of wuhan sometimes in december last year and within a very short period of time i mean uh, by the end of march uh, the world was completely locked down so within just 3 months the whole world was locked down completely locked down because the rate at which it spread and its heightened vulnerability particularly among the people who are aged and low uh, and have low immune system it it caused great threat to the world population and one of the immediate responses from the world was the complete lockdown 
Now, because the world is interconnected and we live in a, a world of uh, interconnectedness, and this, this uh, coronavirus actually, uh, uh, you know, put us that, that, that oneness uh, was emphasized in the whole world, particularly with this pandemic. Uh, it was not previously, I don't, uh, even if we look at the history, I don't find any example of such uh, magnanimous magnitude, magnitude where uh, the whole world was locked down because of a single pandemic. So uh, what, what Afroz said that oneness in this uh, is very important and it's encouraging also because it, it allows us to think as one. We need to respond to this virus and the, and the, the, the threats that it poses as a single human being. Now, what has happened, because we will not be talking about all other challenges or all other responses, we'll be talking about the responses from education point of view, how as educationists we have been able to respond to the challenges that COVID has posed to us. So, because education uh, becomes the first casualty of any emergency in the world, be it a natural calamity, an earthquake, or we are, as Javed Sahab rightly pointed out, in Kashmir, we are used to it. It's not the coronavirus alone, but we have been living with this uh, lockdown for last many decades now. But, and I think we should, we should have been very much prepared because we have been, you, uh, you know, used to these lockdowns, but we were not. Maybe economically or back home we are prepared, but at the official level, at the level of education, we have not been prepared, well prepared. And the immediate response, I mean, the in immediate response that came from many educational institutes, particularly uh, uh, Delhi University, I think, and Delhi University and JNU started it. Online classes was the only mode that we could think of. And we switched to online classes from the traditional physical classroom space. We went to the virtual online space. But as the shift was abrupt, and it was certain, as I said, there was no preparedness. We were not completely prepared for this shift. And so it was in complete disarray. There was no methodological or systematic manner in which we, we would move, but it was complete, uh, you can say, a chaos of sorts. Some teachers started on WhatsApp, some started on Instagram, some went live on Facebook, some used Google Meet, and Others use Zoom meetings and all. But there was no systematic manner. Now, the sudden shift, in fact, and how our initial response has been, has actually posed certain very important questions. And those questions need an answer for us to be ready for any emergency that we are going to face or how. In fact, we, have not, we are not done with COVID yet. We are in the process of... Uh, uh, facing this and getting used to a new system that we have installed in place and which may or may not work as we want. This certain shift has exposed, as I said, the certain lacunas in particularly our uh, education system. And uh, as I said, I'll be taking examples from college level. And one of the very important uh, things that I have noted is the unpreparedness, as I said. We don't have an alternate business uh, uh, plan in place. In emergency, how do we respond? I think this is, not the this is not for the first time that we have. We are witnessing an emergency of this sort, for example. Yes, the magnitude this time is high. It's world over. But in Kashmir, we are uh, you know, under lockdown from last August. And before that, into uh, 2014, I think, floods, uh, we know that even disruption occurred that time also for nearly six months. There was no educational activity. Now, all this suggests is that we have not been able to actually now get certain lessons from, uh, from, from, from our past experiences because we should have a ready-made pl plan in every college so that we respond, uh, uh, we respond immediately. The team in every college, the first thing that we should do is put in place an emergency management team. That's one. And second, an alternate business running model. So once a contingency occurs, we should immediately switch to that. That team should exactly know what they are going to do and how they are going to manage this. 
Now to manage this, we, uh, we, we, can, we can use two, uh, in fact, two models. One is the online model that we are all using, but I think online model, as other participants also uh, you know, pointed out, has its own limitations. We are not, Javed Saab rightly said that even teachers got a zero in, in the use of technology, how well versed they were in the use of technology. And I, as I said that even now, we have problems con conducting meetings, we have problems connecting with speakers from around the world. It, it signifies how uh, badly we need a technological revolution, at, even at the administration level. You know, forget about students. In fact, I'll, I'll give you some examples of the students, in fact, because we are conducting online examinations now in colleges. And I have, uh, you know, I get calls from students because uh, when students register for online examination, they're asked certain details. For example, one of the very important detail is their email ID. They need to have a unique email ID to register with us. Because in the online world, this, this is the only kind of identity or the ID that the student carries. And I get calls from students saying that, uh, sir, if we ask them, do you have a Gmail account? They say, no, we, we, we don't have a Gmail account, but yes, we have a bank account. So there's, for, for a student, for, for example, there is no difference between a bank account and a Gmail account. That's one level of unpreparedness. It's not that a student is to be blamed, no. We are to be blamed. This is not for the first time that technology is introduced in our country, but we have not been, we all boast of having a, a larger infrastructure, IT infrastructure in place in every college. We boast of having uh, IT enabled classrooms, but we don't use them. Our students don't know how to use them. We, we, I acknowledge that there is a technological divide between those who have and those who have not. Uh, as Afroz already said, that, that divide can be bridged. You know, we can give devices to students, but we simultaneously need them to learn how to use these devices. We have not been able to actually equip our students uh, in the best possible manner so that they can use the existing devices at least. Every household in Kashmir has a device, at least one. <clears throat> and every household, I think, uh, now has, Yasmin, she pointed out that 43% 40, uh, 40, of the people in urban uh, use a stable internet connection like uh, broadband, etc. But even then, are 43% of my students able to use these devices properly? That's the biggest question that stares in our face. And when we get back to offline teaching, this is the first thing that we should address. We should equip our students with proper tools so that they can use technology properly. That's one thing. The second thing is uh, we need student management systems. We need, in every college, we need student management system. The first thing, in fact, the level of preparedness, as I said, uh, was not there. We were not prepared to uh, have our students in online classes because we don't even, we were unable for initially to contact our students. All we had uh, it, it were random Google groups. Uh, you can say Google classes. We don't know whether we had verified students or not. We have students even uh, who are joining Google classes from across colleges. So that verified student data management system is to be put in place so that we know exactly. And this is, I think, uh, uh, this is this is a task that admission committees of the colleges should take immediately. The admission uh, <coughs> process. Uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> the admission process in the colleges should. Uh, take every possible detail and if it's possible uh, I think it's possible because uh, any college that has an uh, uh, that has a, a verified e earnet website can enter into uh, uh, a memorandum with Google who provides access to their services as educational suit which are currently free and I think it's able for us if we work a little bit to provide email ideas to every student unique email ideas to every student when they enter the colleges once that happens we'll be able to connect to our students anytime we want because we will have uh, at least the details to connect with the students and also we need learning management systems in place in all colleges <clears throat> we cannot use we have used as I said, that we have used uh, 
Google Meets, we have used Zoom meetings. Zoom has its own limitations. Google also has its own limitations in terms of the number of participants who, who can uh, actually take part in the meeting and the amount of time that we can spend. For example, Zoom has 40 minutes and all. But if we have customized uh, learning management softwares in place, in every colleges, then these kind of strains, I, I, I don't think we would have these, particularly in, in humanities where uh, we have large classrooms. We have uh, hundreds and thousands of students taking one subject. And it's difficult then to uh, you know, actually uh, get them into one meeting hall and, and share, share, share with them. Other thing I think we, we can learn is, uh, this is also one of the components of the level of preparedness or the emergency management or the alternate business management plan that we should um, be focusing on, is uh, when we get back to class, I hope we get back soon, when we get back to the actual learning, we should record actual learning lectures. We should record teachers delivering actual le lectures and students participating also. This simulation can actually, uh, you know, be later used uh, when, when, when emergencies occur. These are the lectures that we can use actually because at least that uh, connectedness that uh, uh, Dr. Javed Saab also talked about can be reduced to a certain extent if not more. Uh, and we can also use this in lab run courses where if, if a teacher is doing, a student is doing experiments, we can record those actual experiments and then uh, upload that video to our student uh, management system or the learning management software and, 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 and then uh, share with our students. Also, as uh, Talat Parvez Sahab also uh, uh, particularly stressed, that we should now make it a norm that uh, 50 or 60% of the syllabus is necessarily covered online. I mean, even if we get back to offline teaching now, we should make it a norm so that everyone understands that it's very important. As a teacher, I should learn now. I should not stop to learn uh, the, the uses of the new technologies and how these technologies can be used for the benefit of the students. Because this is very important for, for, for me. We, 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 cannot be, uh, we cannot lock ourselves down in our offices and think that our duty is over. Uh, just by delivering uh, lectures in the classroom. No, we have to be technologically more motivated. And this is the only way we can, uh, uh, you know, meet the challenges that COVID or any emergency uh, poses in future. Then we also have uh, problems at the level of students, as uh, said. We need to uh, uh, orient our students to use technology properly. And also we need to give them access to uh, and these devices. The digital divide is something that we cannot immediately uh, bridge. And I don't know what policy decisions are needed to bridge that divide, but we somehow need certain policy issues that can bridge that uh, divide and uh, make internet accessible to every household in India. And at least uh, every household should be given one digital device, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I guess free of cost or at least uh, on, on a very low price. But these are the kind of policy decisions that we don't have any power. We can only suggest things. And I hope, uh, Professor, um, I, I hope the people uh, at the helm of the affairs particularly take note of these things. And uh, I'm sure that these will uh, be, uh, this is the uh, kind of future that education is going to take in our country and in Kashmir particularly. And with this, I'd like to end. I thank you again, uh, uh, Dr. Yunus and the team for organizing this event and for inviting us all. Thank you. Thank you, Bilal. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I hope your participants and viewers will appreciate what you have been saying. Uh, now we are moving towards the end of this webinar. Uh, I would uh, like to inform all our viewers that uh, the organizing team will forward the uh, feedback link. They would fill that, and after that, they will get the e certificates. You know, with the permission of our honorable principal, I would request now uh, my colleague, Professor Zohra Madlonsab, to offer a vote of thanks.
Pan Nita Muñones. Muñones. Thank you, Yunus, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all speakers and participants of this session. And a very happy Teacher's Day to all the teachers. Uh, I would start with an old saying, which says, an optimist sees an opportunity in every calamity. And a pessimist sees calamity in every opportunity. So these are the two sides of the coin in the present, present situation as far as e-learning is concerned. It is now up to we people, that is the teaching community, to take it as opportunity or calamity, especially in Kashmir Valley, where, as uh, Dr. Javed Sab also mentioned, uh, other than COVID also, we see frequent shutdowns and you know it is a great loss to this education. Now, today we had uh, the first session, which was the inaugural session, and uh, we had uh, our worthy Commissioner Secretary to Government, Higher Education Department, uh, Janab uh, Talat Parve Sahab, uh, you know, who is a keen, uh, you know, adopter of this IT technology. And then we were joined by Nodal Principal Kashmir Division, Professor Dr. Yasmin Ashai ji. Uh, she also gave uh, very good encouraging remarks regarding the use of technology in education. Now, in the second session, we had three speakers. One, Dr. Afroz Shasab, who is an international participant in this webinar. Uh, he's faculty at University of Bernoy, and he gave his suggestions and views because he is uh, far away from this Kashmir Valley, but ultimately knowing the pros and cons of e-learning in our scenario, in the scenario of Kashmir. Then we had Dr. Javid Saab, he's a faculty member at uh, University of Kashmir. And finally, we had Dr. Bilal Saab, who is faculty in the higher education department itself. We, uh, from the entire staff of Government Degree College, we are very thankful to all the three speakers for sparing their valuable time and uh, giving their important suggestions and views regarding the e-learning. Uh, I am thankful to our Professor A.R. Najar Sahib, the host principal, for uh, arranging this type of webinar on a special day for the teaching community, that is on the Teacher's Day. We are also thankful to the IQAC uh, GDC Kulgam for organizing and for their sincere efforts for the successful conduct of this webinar. We are also thankful to all the participants who uh, got connected with us from uh, different parts of uh, the country. Uh, we are thankful to all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zohar Saab. Uh, that's it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I thank uh, Dr. Afroz, Dr. Javed, Dr. Bilal, that uh, on a short notes, they all joined us. Thank you all the participants from different parts of India, uh, particularly my friends at Maharashtra, UP. Uh, thank you all. Thank you very much.